Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we used Q function iteration within the dynamic programming framework where the model of the environment was known. So to do this Q function iteration, iteration you need to compute S prime. And if you remember, S prime is TSA. So you need to know that transitioning function. Instead, today, um, in Q-learning, which is a powerful model-free reinforcement learning, we don't require the knowledge of this transition function. It can be unknown. Instead, we will rely on the knowledge of S, A, S prime, um, and A prime, but uh, really S, A, and S prime. I am writing this to be theoretically cor correct. We're going to discuss about it, about A prime. All right, so Q-learning update rule is given in yellow here, this rule. I changed my notation a little bit. I am more using the common um, how we write up things in the learning literature. If you remember, you know, last class, the first time I used um, this, I, I was showing a um, rule, which was the Q-learning iteration rule. You know, I wrote it as equals, I wrote here k plus one, k, so on and so forth, other places. Instead, um, I will start using this symbol here. It means that you compute the site, get your value, assign that value as the new value to Q at a particular state S with respect to a particular action A. All right, we can rewrite this yellow equation like this. So basically we have this alpha, multiplied by Q. I am just taking it and grouping it with here. So we have uh, 101 minus alpha and alpha here. Alpha is between um, zero and one. This is closed, it can be one, and this is open, it cannot be zero. It means it is the learning rate we're gonna discuss momentarily. Before that, I want you to recognize from the previous lecture, this is the Bellman equation that we used in Q function iteration. It pops up here as well in Q-learning, since Q-learning is based on, is predicated on the roots of, you know, Q iteration, uh, dynamic programming. So basically, if let's say you choose alpha to be one, let's say, why not? This becomes zero, this becomes one. In this case, we learn faster, we rely, we basically get new Q values from the Bellman equation. If we choose on the other hand, zero, close to zero, we cannot choose zero, then this term is becoming like one, this is kind of zero, and then uh, algorithm will not learn much of a new information. So in practice, um, if you use similar alpha to summarize, you basically, it is a stable learning, slow is nice, but it will have a slower convergence. If you choose alpha to be close to one, this leads to faster learning, yes, but you also risk uh, have a risk with regard to instability and oscillations in parameter estimates can happen. Um, we're going to discuss more about it. So let me first uh, talk about the convergence of this um, Q-learning update rule. By the way, in this, in the today's lecture, um, I'm going to introduce the theory and, and I will show you how you need to implement the algorithm. And in the next class, I will show an example that we will uh, make everything crystal clear. But first, theory so that you know, in learning, reinforcement learning, we need to know what we are dealing with. We shouldn't do some randomization. Um, I mean, we need to know how the theory works, all I'm going to say. So this uh, Q-learning update law has asymptotic convergence. Basically, as the number of iterations uh, getting larger and larger, Q-learning asymptotically converges to the optimal Q-table if we have two conditions, and we're going to discuss about two, these two conditions. First one, um, from 0, k0 zero to infinity, this series, alpha to the power of 2, your learning rate, the sum needs to be finite. So, um, we can discuss about that. The second one actually is um, 
um, a bit more important one from my standpoint. It says all the state action pairs are visited infinitely often. All right, let's first discuss about condition one. In fact, it, we can easily satisfy that condition. It is not a hard condition. For example, to produce this a finite number, you can choose your learning rate to be alpha equals to one over k. It gets smaller and smaller in time uh, per iteration. Um, but this can go fast. This can go small real fast. So right in 10, 10 iterations, it becomes 0 0.1, 100 iterations, 0 0.01. You know, sometimes when I use uh, reinforcement learning for um, not only academic, but industrial applications, really, I remember doing millions of iterations. Um, so to solve this problem, you can introduce a number like this. Initially, it is close to one. If you like, if you want to start from 0 0.5, for example, instead of one here, you can start at 0 0.5 divided by one plus beta k. Beta is some small number like you can choose zero point, you know, some number, small number, such that as you k increase, your denominator will get bigger and bigger. So, um, so you, your alpha will decay so that you will satisfy this to be finite. As this being said, um, I should mention, um, I often use a constant number and I don't observe any problem with asymptotic convergence. So I use numbers like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, sometimes 0 0.01, depend, depending on the application, uh, sometimes 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I usually don't want to go anything more than that. And if I observe some level of instability, I always choose it to be small. But instead of observing instability and make it small, you can start small and slightly increase as well. I guess there is no... Uh, unique way of doing things everybody has a different taste but first condition even if you choose as a constant and it is not problematic the problematic condition is condition two in general it is hard to ensure that you visit every state action pair often enough so basically you know infinitely often means practically often enough basically the algorithm tends to exploit the known rewards which causes missing out on unvisited states and this hinders learning to optimal policy but don't worry there is a solution and this solution is called you know while using basically exploiting um, change selecting um, actions that maximize a certain reward, which is called exploitation. Explore, let's once in a while choose a ran take a random action. So, you know, um, it can be a good or bad one, but it will be a learning experience. More formally speaking, in the literature, it is called the trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Exploration, as I tried to explain, but more formally, agent tries out different actions to discover new information about the environment, even if those actions don't lead to immediate rewards or you can get a penalty. But if you get a penalty, you will learn, I should, you shouldn't do this. So exploration often is great. And exploration is the key that we satisfy the second condition here, such that we can guarantee asymptotic convergence to the optimal Q-table. Exploitation is um, basically the agent simply uses its current knowledge to choose an action that maximizes its reward based on the current Q values. This argument max Q as alpha uh, A thing. And how we ba balance exploration and exploitation is using epsilon greedy strategy. Basically, what we're going to do is with some probability epsilon, we choose a random action. Let's say 20%, 25% of the time, I will choose a random action. And uh, for the rest of the time, with the probability of one minus epsilon, let's say 75% of the time, we choose an action that maximizes the Q value. We do exploitation. Um, 
basically um, this how you choose your epsilon is if you do too much exploration like let's say you do 90 percent of the time you choose your actions randomly that's bad right this can lead to unnecessary actions that may not at all maximize your rewards your algorithm will work randomly and on the other hand too much exploitation let's say you only um, explore only 0.01 percent of the time so you always choose your actions opt optimally from the q function using this art max this can cause agent to miss discovering better actions that can yield higher rewards in the long run so how do i choose epsilon i try to basically start with five percent to 25 percent exploration at the beginning then move accordingly if you like you can you know you can also start like for example during the first uh, few iterations start with like 50 percent exploration and over time you know um, similar to this uh, how we defined this you can define a similar variable to epsilon over time you decrease to 40 percent 30 percent 10 percent all the way up to 0 0.1 percent because once you do iterations long enough uh, many times then you almost converge to the optimal q table then you really exploration won't uh, add any value uh, you know at the end as this being said we can now introduce the learning algorithm and um, step one is basically nothing but you initialize q values you can in initialize as random values between say 1 to minus 1 0.1 to minus 0.1 or you can choose them uh, as zeros um, i often choose them as zeros only in a couple of applications adding random values help me to converge faster so keep this in mind and step two is the main algorithm basically take an action and this action that you are going to take is based on um, let's say you choose some epsilon epsilon to be let's say um, some small number with some let's say 0.2 or 0.1 so 90 percent of the time you are basically choosing uh, an optimal like action by using this art max and remaining 10 percent of the time you choose a random action and depending on what you choose this will be your action so you basically would like to apply an action to the environment step three applying a to the environment and now we are not using this tsa so you apply think about you have a robot you inject a signal a a force then robot will go from point one to point two you measure this point two which is your s prime and compute the reward based on sna so step four is update the q table using this sna using the q learning rule this is the part we're going to discuss a, a prime so pay attention so basically we know s a and s prime so we can compute this part we know the reward we can compute this now we know this we know this we know everything but here basically this max a uh, a prime basically you need to go to your uh, q table and uh, sorry max q s prime and if you are using matlab do this basically you look at the row rows of this uh, s prime row and you are choosing the action with the highest value so this doesn't mean you need to know a prime uh, you simply basically choose look at the row that corresponds to s prime and choose uh, the highest value q again we are going to do a numerical detailed example in the next class today is the theory so step five repeat from step two until convergence or the end of all episodes so i wrote this in video episodes so sometimes like instead of convergence basically 
um, you look at you right so let's say you uh, end up having your robot goes to the terminal state and at the, the terminal state you can stop the algorithm and you start a new episode going from some state to the terminal state and step six is basically extract optimal policy p, p prime after convergence or after you complete all the episodes using uh, basal arc max q s a and q is the your converged or uh, you know uh, q table hope you like this stay tuned within a couple of days you are going to see an example that you are going to see this algorithm in action thank you